everybody so welcome to another edition of knowledge graph technology showcase winter edition where i go through some of the cool tools and services that are out there so that you don't necessarily have to reach out to that salesperson unless you really want to all right and these are all my honest review these are not sponsored and if i miss something that you really want to see reviewed make sure you link it down below and today we're going to be talking to Siren, which is something that I hadn't heard of until recently, but they have a lot of really cool tools um, in their repertoire. And I really love how it is somewhat plug and play for the analyst. And they give a lot of options for not just graph, but other types of data. All right, so if this sounds interesting to you. Keep on watching. And so my name is uh, Giovanni Tumorello, and uh, I'm uh, one of the founders and uh, the chief product office officer today. And what is Siren? Well, Siren is um, something that comes from uh, our dream of exploring interconnected data in, in a very free way, where data can be everything ranging from text to records to images and navigating this large knowledge graph in, in in a way that's uh, that's very powerful. We started to build the uh, the real deal, and we built the real deal based on Elasticsearch, and then we built our technology on top of it. So there is a plugin that extends the basic Elasticsearch to the point of being able to do uh, to do uh, a, a relational operation joins, which then turn into graph operations, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we built the whole experience so that you can you know search, drill down, but also navigate as a graph okay no, it's, so it's not uh, it's not, it's not uh, using it's, graph no it's it's giving you it's it's making you see information as a graph it oh, will make you see the information as a graph because the real graph is in the no is in the information but it doesn't necessarily need to sit in a graph database i mean you can have information in a in a in a in, a, in an excel table like in a perfectly <laughs> excel file mm -hmm. and the information is something like Geo calls Marco, Marco calls Ashley, Ashley calls Geo. You see, it's yeah. an Excel, but it is a graph because, you know, you could see it as a set of connections between entities. You see what I mean? OK, so We're so you can use and correct me if I'm wrong. So you could use graph data if you have it, but you can also use other structured text like a CSV or something from a relational exactly. database. And as long as it has some kind of relation between exactly. the different nodes, your tool is then going to help help people display that and discover them, right? Yes, absolutely. That's okay. absolutely correct. So the reality is, in fact, that inside enterprises or organizations, people very seldom have a graph already built. They are <laughs> like a knowledge graph or a graph yeah. database. What yep. they have is a bunch of tables. So yep. it is a graph if you think about it. If you can just connect the dots, you say, okay, take the email here. If it matches the table, then it's you know connected. And if it met this the social security number matches there, then it's the same person. So if you could mm -hmm. just draw what, what the schema on top of the data where you have yeah. it. So here you have yeah. it in the table, then and then you have a software that makes it look like a graph. Then mm -hmm. happy days, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't, mm -hmm. you know, have to, and that siren, that siren is that does yeah. that. You you can Take your tables, describe how data is connected, and then you'll see it as a graph, but also you will see it also as a table. So you get mm -hmm. the best of uh, business intelligence, which typically deals with dashboard and drill downs, but mm -hmm. also of the graph link analysis capability. And in this demo, we have a set of tables quite simply. So for example, here I have 160,000 companies taken from the TechCrunch database, which is a database of startups mostly. Mm -hmm. It's an old version of this database. It's not the latest one, but it does give the idea. Here mm -hmm. I have a set of articles, and articles have been collected from the web. They're typically taken from websites like ZetaDNet and the like. So they do talk about technical companies and, and, mm -hmm. and the like. You see differences in what's connected. Uh, I have 160,000 uh, companies. You can see that they are uh, connected to 300,000 articles, right? Mm -hmm. But when I'm drilling down and I'm saying, you know, I just want to see the companies in the east of the United States, then these connections immediately update, and now they're only connected to 58,000 articles. In other words, you know immediately what's connected to this set. And what you can do is you can click on, on here, and it will navigate. And I go from a set of companies to a set of articles that talk okay. about those companies, 
right? That's so, really cool. How would you get to the article itself if that's what you want to look at? Let's say one of these articles you want to do a deep dive onto. Yeah. Now, in this dashboard, you see, you know, the aggregates information about the article. So mm -hmm. what are the main keywords? What are the main topics? You know, Facebook is here. You can go and extract, but you can also, of course, see the individual um, individual articles. They're all here. So and you can, nice. actually, you know, then open them and and see an individual one, get more details about this. Here we have just a snippet, right? And, uh, you know, see the metadata associated with it and individually see what's connected. So Cisco system is mentioned here. So you can click and see that it mentioned Cisco and, you know, another organization. Then you can click here and go and explore. Oh, Cisco, is it mentioned in many other articles? I don't know. You can click here and realize that it's mentioned in 1.7, you know, in, in mm. 1,700 more articles. It actually received an investment and, and things like mm. that. So the key here to this relational associative buttons yep. is the data model. And the data model is here and it's freely editable, edited by the users. In this data model, you see I have the four tables and basically mm -hmm. you can just upload data. In fact, I'm going to do it later. I'm going to be adding some data to show you how you can extend the knowledge graph right. just by, by dragging and dropping a CSV. Mm -hmm. So what you can do here is you, you should be doing here is defining the relations between those uh, tables. So tables. here, here I have the concept of companies, which is the one you saw before connected to um, the articles, uh, companies connected to investment and investors. Let me double click here and, you know, then you get to the details of the companies. So the companies have, you know, um, you can, you just, you know, an icon, a set of fields. So there's a company name, last name. This is all the metadata associated. You can take a look at the data at low level, right? Each one of the records, you, you've seen them. But what's more, most interesting is this relation tab. This is mm -hmm. where you define your relation. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a person and the person has the social security number and you have a car record, like, you know, an automobile and the automobile record has the owner social security number, then what you would do is say, okay, take the social security number. If it matches the one of the record, then the person owns that car, mm -hmm. right? So here mm -hmm. in this example is the same thing. You know, you are basically saying, if the company ID, right, because, you know, it's one of the fields, matches the article companies, which is a specific field extracted by NLP, right, then there is a match. So I can, you know, explore this relation and see if there are matching records by clicking here. Uh, and you will see that, yes, you see, for example, this is a company, right? There's a company which has an ID, Google, and inside, and there's plenty of articles where you can find that, there is that ID mentioned here because the NLP engine, the natural language, has actually extracted yeah. the ID. So it's this is like a debugger of the relations. When you find that there are some, then you're you know you're 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 good. And so it's quite I have simple. a question. Yeah, I yes, have a question please. about that because a lot of the the graph databases and tools that sit on top of them have something similar to this. It's I, the way I describe it is it's a ETL tool from raw table data into a relational yeah. type format. One thing that I, you know, in a demo that looked beautiful, it saw Google, it saw Google. How often does that actually happen though? Because we all know that tables are very messy and people don't use the same string. So is your NLP engine able to disambiguate and can you share how accurate it is? Yeah, I think that's that's a good question. Uh, it's also important that you that you know when you're developing a product, uh, you can't uh, boil the ocean, as they say, oh, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is, a, you know, we do offer an NLP engine out of the box for free. But and you know, if you go in business to business, an NLP engine can cost you, can set you back two hundred thousand, two hundred thousand yeah. dollars or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So when you're getting siren, the basic siren is is definitely Definitely not that expensive. It's, it's actually very, very um, accessible, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does contain an NLP engine. So it, it's our free NLP engine built in. So yes, you can do this sort of things. It will extract the labels. It will extract the names of companies, um, you know, persons, locations. And if you have the same string in the other data set, it will mm -hmm. match. 
But mm -hmm. more fancy for more fancy operations, we have a set of partners that actually provide all the fancy things. And there mm -hmm. is plenty of fancy capabilities, including entity resolution, for example, yeah. which is much more sophisticated and can deal with all the spelling differences. Mm -hmm. It can even deal with cultural differences, like, you know, nice. Bob is Robert or Rob in US culture. And therefore, mm -hmm. they, it knows that. Most of the time, um, uh, customers, especially big, uh, you know, agencies like own. law enforcement, they have their own. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so, so, you know, you, you, Siren can perfectly work with whatever engine you have. Now you're, we are interested in what are the companies that are mentioned in this uh, article? And you can see that there is a, out of one, 160,000, there is 1,400 which are mentioned here. So mm -hmm. I can click and do this associative navigation called set to set, which will bring me to the list of companies and see that there is, you know, for some reason, a lot of companies here in the West, uh, West Coast of the United States. But maybe I'm interested only in uh, companies in a certain area here in the middle. So looking at 92 companies. Now, 92 companies, okay, uh, you can see immediately that they are connected with 60 investments, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I want to know who are the investors behind these people? And let me click and therefore go from a set of companies to a set of investments. Maybe I'm only interested in the investments that come after 2004. So that brings me to, to 57 investments. You can see it, all the details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But more interesting, you can see that they're made by 33 investors, right? Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. click and, you know, the whole trail is preserved. So you mm -hmm. know that these are exactly the investors that have invested, uh, you know, from that 2005 into companies. And those companies are the ones mentioned in banking, with mm -hmm. the banking. Mm -hmm. You can see the whole mm -hmm. thing here, right? So this can be a really interesting set of results, which would be quite difficult to get otherwise because yeah. it's not a trivial drill down. But sometimes you're interested in the connections between them. I mean, did they invest mm -hmm. together? Did they invest against each other? Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is really link analysis, for which we are include a link analysis browser. So at any time of the investigation, you can just, you know, take those companies and drop them into the link analysis. But the cool thing is that basically, if you think about it, that set to set navigation, this button was doing at an enormous scale what link analysis is doing on a record by record case. Yeah. You see what I mean? Because mm -hmm. when I'm going from all the companies in California to all their investment, it's like putting it on the graph, like, you know, uh, 50,000 companies and going to 30,000 investments. But on the dashboards, yeah. it's just a click. So mm -hmm. it's really exciting to take the, exciting. the point of view because, you know, you can take the graph point of view. That's fine for some investigations. Or you can take the dashboard approach. Yeah. But it is the yeah. same data. It is the same knowledge graph. Or maybe you're here and you want to know... Um, you want to get a scatter plot, you want to know more about all these investments, like how much money is here, right? And, yeah. and so one of the things, it would be much better to have a dashboard, right? Because it is much better to have like an analytic view. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you just select and you decide to go back. So you see, I went from dashboards to graph by dragging and dropping, right? Mm -hmm. Now I can do the same thing by creating a filter. By doing this, now there's 53 entities because, you know, there's investors, there's plenty mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. I can click on the um, on the spinning. And when you do this spinning, what it does, it, it actually projects it here. So you see there is nice. 44 investments, 55 investors all, you know, here. So what I can do now is go in the um, in investments and um, and you see the investment. So these are the ones that were on the graph. So mm -hmm. at this point, you get the power of the dashboard back because I can see mm -hmm. them over time. This this was not possible on the graph. And then you can, yeah. of course, continue your navigation and see the 33 companies that now are with associated. That, with that pin that you just made, if I am maybe working on this assessment with a colleague, would they be able to use the pin? Can I share that with them? Is this collaborative? You can, you can, you can, you can do that, and this is very important for us. So the, the, what the core, the core element for this is what we call data spaces. Mm -hmm. Data spaces mm -hmm. are a complete environment where you can do your experiments and you can share with your colleagues. Nice. So here, yeah. for example, I can create a new data space and I can call it, for example, you know, investigation three three four, whatever it is, and you can say investigation on banking in uh, the uh, mid us right or something like this and you can clone you start by cloning it from an existing data space so you could you know clone and create kind of branches so i'm going to um, clone the default data space 
and you know you can uh, uh, you can give it uh, you give it an icon specifically for this decide to share it with some colleagues or not and i'm going to create this uh, investigation so now i have it right and i can click here now that i am in investigation you can see investigation 332 on top yep. of here yep. so now i can really do what i want and, and what i mean by this is i could change the data model just for this investigation or mm -hmm. i could add data just mm -hmm. inside this investigation so let me actually do that because i think yes. it's interesting yeah so i could you know you can even um, create a, a new table by by hand I, like editing the schema uh, do a, a new table uh, called uh, acquisitions, right? And then you could put a set of fields, for example, that says, um, you know, one, two, three, uh, and say uh, uh, acquirer, you know, um, uh, buyer, uh, and then uh, company, sorry, a uh, very simple thing, company and amount or something like this. Uh, so, so say that I create this, Right, so I created this structure for acquisition. So at this point, I have created, let me see, so I have a table of acquisitions uh, mm -hmm. right here. So mm -hmm. now what I want to do is populate it with data, right? Mm -hmm. I need to populate it with data. So what you would do is you would add data, right? Mm -hmm. From, and then you can select from a source, like a SQL database that you have. Mm -hmm. We have a partnership so that we can uh, get you over, uh, uh, yeah, over 200 drivers. I mean, there's a bit of work involved in getting it working, but all these drivers for all these systems can be used yes. as sources uh, for Siren. So once you're here, now I'm going to select the CSV file. I am going to uh, select a, uh, a file. And this is not a file of acquisition, it's a file of investments, but it has a similar structure because mm -hmm. it has the name of a company here, and mm -hmm. uh, the name of uh, an investor here, which is also a company sometimes. So uh, it won't you know, work very well, but you get a sense of what this is about. Yeah. Because in the next step, I can select where I want to load this data to, and I'm going to select acquisition. So I'm going to try to fill. You see, I have some source data from the mm -hmm. table, and it needs to be filled mm -hmm. here. So I could just take you know, the name of the company and put it in the company. Why not? Nice. Yeah, you see what I mean? And, and the name yeah. of the investor and put it in, in the buyer and the amount of money I could take it from raised amount. And, and uh, unfortunately, I selected a keyword. I should have selected the integer or float. So yeah, the type yeah. is not going to allow me to do uh, to do much. But once you once you have done something like this, you can, of course, test it and see how it is here. You can write a formula. Yeah. So, you know, here I could say buyer, um, you know, you could just uh, like like Excel, you can say uh company or example whatever so if i do this you you will test it and um you will see that you need see it has company at the, at the end of it because mm -hmm. i just mm -hmm. added so you mm -hmm. can write mm -hmm. formulas mm -hmm. and do a little transform you can adapt mm -hmm. your data it's like a little etl built in that's, so that's great. At, this, at this point you just go ahead and uh and and go for it so it will it will be loading now it's loading forty thousand records they're being loaded right and mm -hmm. uh, so as it goes uh, one of the cool thing is we have this table, so we, we edited the schema, but we haven't, we don't have a dashboard for it, right? We, mm. we, we haven't, you know, because we simply don't have it. But one of the cool thing is you can, um, you can actually create it very simply in Siren. So you could select just a few fields, for example, the amount, the buyer, the company, and just decide to generate a dashboard on the fly. This is not going to be. This is cool. I like this. Yeah, and, and this is not going to be very nice dashboard because, you know, the data is not great. <laughs> yeah, and this is right, not a number. Right. If it was a number, it, it yeah. would be better. But I just want to get you a sense how simple it is to, to get started. So here it is. That's the dashboard for you. Yeah, and you can also, by the way, you can you can do some editing if you if you know if something is wrong. We have this editing capability. You can fix it. Oh, no, this wasn't this one. You can do data entry if you want. So maybe you wanted to add a new record, like a new mm -hmm. that you forgot, you can use mm -hmm. it. And, and so now we created this. What's missing is the relations. We haven't mm -hmm. created a relation. So mm -hmm. now it's time to go here and basically maybe create a relation. So that I, I need to do this. I need to do I need to do company. And instead of connected to investor, I connected to company. So if you edit this, <laughs> so I will connect it to, to ID companies. And then I believe this will work. In fact, it does. You see, there it is. Moby very. Nice. Right. So so at this point, it's it's much more fun because <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. And you can then 
even create a new concept for the yeah so so now just to give you a sense um now acquisitions you don't see the button to navigate but you could add it so you could do edit add add a new visualization and you have this relational navigator which is mm -hmm, a component mm -hmm. like everything else and this is now added so you see this relational down here yeah. you see it, it gives me the links the other thing i wanted to ask is this is really cool you're kind of seeing it as a graph is there a way to export it with these relationships so that you can maybe start to build out real graphs and graph databases um yeah you can export in uh, in many ways i mean you can export to the graph you can create a pdf uh, a pdf report out of this you know people typically create pdfs then they attach mm -hmm. them to the tickets um you can export a specific result like you know you i want to export uh, this list of acquisitions I would mm -hmm. just simply, you know, create a filter, go in the acquisition table and then, you know, go here and export. Uh, so one thing that I want to I do want to say is that you can download Siren for free. There is a free edition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a community edition and it works very nice. You can do you can do the, mm, the graph, the dashboards and everything else. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a, a hopefully a very nice getting started tutorial. And in the getting cool. started yeah. tutorial, you get some CSV files. And you're basically rebuilding the the demo that you have, that I've showed you. Yep. You know, you build the yep. company investment demo, yep. and. Uh...